We begin today with the stunning announcement via X post yesterday that President Joe Biden will be dropping out of the presidential race, vying for a second term. But the very real question this morning is, where the hell is the president? <laughs> where is he? Why haven't we seen him? At 1.46 p.m. Eastern on Sunday afternoon, Joe Biden unceremoniously ended his reelection bid with a one-page written statement posted by whoever writes his X account, typewritten, I should clarify. As of this moment, we still have not seen or heard from the president publicly. The news was kept so close to the vest that even top advisors and members of his cabinet say they found out via social media. Stunned White House staffers reported to have broken down in tears at the news. After all, they had been defiantly telling us all for weeks that President Biden was not dropping out of the race, which many of us did not believe. According to an in-depth piece published by Politico and another from the New York Times, here's how at least they're saying it all went down. I'm coming to this with a healthy dose of skepticism. I think you should too. It, pieces of this feel like a manipulation. Uh, here's what they are saying. And this is obviously from White House sources to Political in the Times. On Saturday, Mr. Biden summoned close advisors, Steve Ricchetti and Mike Donilon to his Delaware beach home where they socially distanced from the president, supposedly, uh, because of his COVID, to help craft his exit strategy. These are his closest aides. Remember, the White House told us on Wednesday, Mr. Biden is suffering with COVID. Okay. That same night, video showed Mr. Biden appearing to need physical assistance to even get into his waiting motorcade. Can you see this? Try to look. We spotlighted it. But it's alarming. This does not look like COVID. Uh, this looks like somebody... I don't know. He can barely get into a car. Look at this. Extremely fragile, slow, rigid. Um, it's hard to see in the dark, but you can see a bit. Uh, he is not in good shape. And since then, we haven't seen him. It looks like his security detail actually has to move his legs for him into the SUV. The president was whisked off to Delaware to isolate, has not been seen since. Then comes the paper statement, I'm out. The New York Times says Donilon helped craft the statement. The other guy, Ricchetti, focused on next steps, like when to inform staffers, most of whom were kept in the dark, so they say. In fact, as of late Sunday morning, few knew about it. The first to hear the truth outside of that small circle were the vice president, the White House chief of staff, and the Biden campaign manager, who we played for you over the weekend, saying, he's in it for the long haul. And then we played you the DeSantis and the Haley soundbite saying, we're in it for the long haul, right before they dropped out. Each of those members I just mentioned uh, reportedly received calls directly from the president. That's what they say. Then just one minute before the news broke, President Biden reportedly told other advisors, including Anita Dunn, who manages comms for him. Next came the post on X and the letter that leaves many questions. First, the thing does not include the official White House seal. It's not on White House stationery. It simply says Joseph R. Biden, R. Biden Jr. at the top. Why is that? Don't know. The letter reads, quote, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and to focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. There's no explanation for his decision and there's no endorsement of his vice president. Curiously, many are questioning if the signature at the bottom of this letter even belongs to the president, did he actually sign this letter? Under his name is an underline, which he apparently never does. And it appears that the name Biden has an S at the end. The Bidens, it looks like. Joseph R. Bidens? It's unlike anything we've ever seen from Joe Biden. On the screen here, you can see a sample of prior signatures from the president. There's no underline and he doesn't use an S at the end. Now I will tell you, the way he signs his name, maybe we get that name back up, you guys, where it's just his signature with a J. Um, if you're gonna sign something on behalf of your husband, for example, you do a line, you do this in the law. You do a line and you say like, for Joe Biden. That's how you would sign it. Like if I were gonna sign it for him, for Joe Biden, I'd do a line to show it wasn't actually Joe Biden. And maybe the S is meant to connote it's from both of them. 
you know, Joe and Jill. I've got a lot of questions about this myself. Why is there an S? I did go back personally to look at his other signatures just to see if that's just the way his N looks and there looks like there's an S at the end of it. That No, that's not the case. I don't know what the S is doing there. I do think we deserve answers. I'm not going full conspiracy theory on you. I just, why is that? Why haven't we seen him? Why isn't it on White House stationery? Why does it have an S at the end? And why is there an underline when there never is? What's what's happening? Is he okay? Uh, there are some concerning statements coming out from his brother about how on a selfish basis, he's looking forward to spending whatever time the president has left with him. What does that mean? He's still our sitting president. He didn't resign the presidency. He's just not running for a second term. Um. Getting back to the messaging, Political also reporting that the lack of endorsement for his vice president triggered a flurry of panic text messages and calls. So 27 minutes after the initial message, that statement we just went over, Joe Biden's ex account again posted another tweet clarifying that he was backing Ms. Harris, offering her his, quote, full support and endorsement to be the nominee. A short time ago, she made her first public appearance at the White House. Our president, Joe Biden, wanted to be here today. He is feeling much better and recovering fast, and he looks forward to getting back on the road. And I wanted to say a few words about our president. Joe Biden's legacy of accomplishment over the past three years is unmatched in modern history. In one term, he has already, yes, you may clap. (laughs) In one term, He has already surpassed the legacy of most presidents who have served two terms in office. And I first came to know President Biden through his son, Bo. We worked together as attorneys general in our states. And back then, Bo would often tell me stories about his dad. He would talk about the kind of father and the kind of man. All right, you get the gist. It goes off on a personal anecdote. But there she is saying lovely things about the president. He's my hero. He's a hero. And that's what we're hearing all over the media today. So many questions still unanswered. In fact, one of my next guests just wrote that this is the era of the Pino or Pino, the president in name only. That's how it's starting to feel. Some Americans enjoy using their credit cards because it can be a hassle-free and secure way to pay. But our sponsor, the American Payments Coalition, says that some D.C. politicians want to change that with the Durbin Marshall credit card bill. They say the bill lets corporate megastores pick how your credit card is processed, allowing them to use untested payment networks that jeopardize your data security and rewards. They say corporate megastores will make more money and you'll end up paying the price. Find out more info at guardyourcard.com and consider telling Congress to guard your card while you're there too. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.